What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool news video and according to French media outlets, Liverpool have reached an agreement with Max Eberl, who is one of the best sporting directors in the world and that is very, very good news. But the bad news is that according to this news outlet and according to other sources, Bayern Munich have also reached an agreement with the former Red Bull Leipzig sporting director Max Eber, but because he's on gardening leave, there is a rule in Germany that while that lasts, he cannot sign for Bayern Munich. So there is a very real possibility that Max Eber could become the next sporting director for Liverpool. And Eber was actually sagged as a RB Leipzig sporting director in September this year because Leipzig stated the reason as um, in a real lack of a deep interest in Leipzig. He basically was already fl flirting with the idea of becoming Bayern Munich's next sporting director. But if that doesn't happen, then Liverpool are next in line to have a brilliant sporting director. Max Eberl is one of the best sporting directors in Europe and maybe in the world as well. And when he actually left Leipzig, there were st strong rumors that he would go straight to Bayern Munich after they sacked Hasan Salihamidzic and Oliver Kahn, two former uh, Bayern legends who were sporting directors at Bayern Munich. But uh, he's on a gardening leave and he's prevented from signing with Bayern Munich right now and even though Max Eberl probably has the priority of joining Bayern if that move doesn't work out then he would love to work for Liverpool those are the rumors about um, his desires in uh, the German and French media right now Jörg Schmatke is uh, the sporting director at Liverpool but he only has a shorter role until the end of the season so there is a real uh, real real possibility of Max Eberl becoming the next sporting director at Liverpool let me know what do you think about that would you like that and in this video we will take a closer look and what he at what he could bring to Liverpool and also we will bring you guys all the latest other news about Liverpool FC and let me know your score prediction down below in the comments for the Burnham of Liverpool League Cup game and also please guys help me continue making these videos because these videos only make about five to six dollars per day so I need your help donate uh, via the thanks button below the video or you can click the link in the video's description and support me through patreon for a monthly low fee you get great benefits and additional content that way as well thank you so much for your support so the French outlet Sports Zone is reporting that Liverpool have uh, the Liverpool are very very keen on competing for Max Eberl's signature. Liverpool already wanted Max Eberl last summer when Julian Ward departed Liverpool but he wasn't available then, he was working for RB Leipzig but the report claims that uh, Max Eberl's preference is to join Bayern where he spent time as a youth player and even made one first team appearance but a period of imposed gardening leave following his Leipzig exit means he would not be able to take over at Bayern right now immediately. While the uh, length of this gardening leave for Max Eberl is not specified, it is added that should a deal with Bayern become impossible, he has given his word to Liverpool that he will join Liverpool if he can't join Bayern Munich. German outlet Bild adds that Eberl has given a clear priority to Bayern despite renewed interest from Liverpool. However, rather than a start date being the only stumbling block, Bild's report claims that there are still those in Bayern's hierarchy who are not convinced about Max Eberl, with CEO Jan Christian Dresen preferring to hand the role to Christoph Freund. So some people in the Bayern hierarchy want Christoph Freund or somebody else to take over as sporting director. Eberl is said to be honored by Liverpool's interest where a move might be simpler. Because at Liverpool we can say to him that you get priority for us uh, and uh, there are no people opposing Max Eberl's uh, takeover as a new sporting director at Liverpool while at Bayern that's not that simple and even though during the summer transfer window York Schmatke revealed that he has a one-year deal at Liverpool there is a clause in his contract which means that either Schmatke or Liverpool can can 
end the agreement earlier. So if Liverpool find a brilliant sporting director, a suitable replacement for Schmatke, then we can just say to him, you will maybe leave in uh, two weeks or a month. And uh, that is not a breach of contract. Uh, so Jörg Schmatke said, we agreed with Liverpool on a one-year cooperation and agreed to see what would happen after three months. We sit down together, look each other in the eye and decide how to proceed. Both sides are so sovereign and serious that the question is then answered, does it still make sense for us to work together or not? It could be that we shake hands and part or we agree on continuing and in the end they agreed on continuing of course and a lot of people criticized Dior Schmatke in the summer when really he only completed uh, basically really close signings of Alexis McAllister and Dominic Soboslay my fellow countrymen who I absolutely love but then he signed Vatariendo which was pretty impressive that we signed him for a relatively low fee the jury is still out on him but i think he's growing into this liverpool team and he will be proven to be a very astute signing for a pretty low transfer fee we get a very experienced very handy squad player you shouldn't expect endo to start every game to, to light up the premier league he's not that sort of a player he's a hard-working really crafty really really good footballer of course not world class but you need those kind of brilliant squad players that can help you in certain games do certain roles and of course the biggest uh, i think compliment is that uh, we signed ryan gravenbeck on transfer deadline day for a relatively low fee of 35 million and considering how good gravenbeck is right now and what kind of Im immense world-class potential he has i think that is actually a really good work by your schmatke and i think if, if it wasn't for the gravenbeck transfer a lot of people would be skeptical about uh, what your Schmatke did during the summer, but I think the Gravenbeck transfer sealed the deal that he was a good appointment as a sporting director. But of course, we can definitely upgrade on his position. He is like an intermediary, a temporary sporting director, if you like, because I'm sure that Liverpool wanted to do wanted to appoint someone better, but they were not available in the summer trans window and after Jota had a very injury hit season last season I was really looking forward to this season where hopefully Jota can stay fit and it looks like so far so good because in terms of goal scoring this is actually Diog Jota's best season to date uh, because his 0 0.77 goals per 90 minutes is better than his first season which was 0 0.66 his second and third season were even worse 0 0.5 and 0 0.4 goals per 90 minutes uh, and uh, he actually is scoring in uh, more frequently and in better numbers than in any of his previous seasons even it at Pacos Ferreira or Porto or Wolves even though he hasn't registered an official assist yet I think he that's only a matter of time because he's actually getting an expected assist number of 0 0.2 per 90 minutes and 1.5 key passes per 90 minutes only matched or bettered by his 22-23 campaign and he already played as much football as half of last season even though he, we are only 12 games into this season because last season he missed a large chunk of the season with injury I don't understand why some people even called for Liverpool to sell Jota in the summer because he is a very guaranteed goal scorer and he's one of the best strikers in the air which you wouldn't tell if you looked at him and he's not the tallest but he's actually brilliant in uh, being in the right place at the right time and heading the ball fantastically he has so many headed goals it's amazing and also in his nine seasons of professional football he only has two seasons one at Porto and one at Liverpool where he didn't manage to score 10 goals in all competitions so as the numbers go he's maybe not like the greatest finisher in the world but Orchestra's career he has had as many seasons underperforming his expected goals as he has overperforming ones across his career he has underperformed his exactly expected goals by exactly one so he's uh, scoring as many goals as he's expected to score because most elite attackers aren't even elite level finishers it's how consistently they get those chances that matters because the higher the volume of chances you get the more chance to get to score goals and Jota is scoring goals at a very impressive rate so hopefully if Jota stays fit for the whole season and we will play a lot of games in the League Cup, Europa League, FA Cup and Premier League 
Jota hopefully can better his his best season so far at Liverpool was 21-22 season where he scored 21 goals. Hopefully he can score even more and maybe break the 25 or even the 30 goal mark. That's not out of the question. What Jota is, is a very versatile attacker. He can play up front, he can play on the left wing, he can be, play all kinds of different roles in this Liverpool team. And the Europa League actually presents Jota with a starring role because when Darwin Nunez and Luis Diaz is fit and available, they will probably start up front and on the left wing in the biggest games. But in the Europa League, Jota can start. And while Du Luis Diaz is, of course, uh, waiting for his father to be found, hopefully he will be found. No major update on that situation yet. Uh, as I record this video, I, at least I haven't heard any major updates on that situation. Until Luis Diaz can be back playing for Liverpool, Jota can start even more games and hopefully get goals and get assists and just uh, rack up the numbers, which is really, really brilliant that we have now five attackers who can score 10, 15, 20 goals a season. Jota, uh, Salah is the only player who is guaranteed to score pretty much 30 goals a season, but if the other four can get 20, 15, 20, 25 goals, then that's absolutely brilliant for Liverpool. And I still think that Liverpool have uh, one of the best um, attacking departments, one of the best uh, strike forces in the Premier League. Name me a Premier League team who has five attackers who can easily score 10, 15, 20 goals any season across all competitions. And in the Premier League, maybe not all of them will score 10 goals each, but across all competitions, if a striker scores 15, 20 goals, then I consider that a successful season. But I think Darwin Nunez will be able to score 25 goals if he stays fit. Salah will again probably score 30, 35 goals. He's on course to even score even more. And uh, as I said, Jota will score 15, 20 goals. Gakpo will score 15, 20 goals. Luis Diaz will score 15, 20 goals. The only doubt that I have is maybe Gakpo will, won't hit 15 goals because he's now probably fifth choice attacker. He will still, when he's fully fit, he will still start a lot of games and get a lot of goals and assists. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.